My name is Katie Gallagher, and I'm the Director of Product Marketing for Teaching and Learning Products at Blackboard K-12. And I want to thank Jenny Breister from our K-12 Field Marketing Team joining us today to help out. We'll be joining you for the K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series this spring. We're always open to new ideas for topics you'd like to see. And please let us know if you'd like to present in the future. Just send us an email or a tweet. Every webinar in this series will be recorded, including today. You can search for the K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series playlist on the Blackboard TV YouTube channel or go to tinyurl.com slash bits K-12. You'll be receiving this recording and um, it, through email in the next couple days. You can also access the presentation slides in PDF form on the community site within a couple days after the webinar. Uh, that, this is a screenshot of that new community site. Access it. That this URL, I'm going to place it in the chat for you. We invite you to sign up, and you'll have the recordings of every session in the series, as well as PDFs and information about what's coming in the future. We have a lot of great sessions uh, planned for this spring. Our next session is next Monday at 3.30 Eastern Time with David Hammond from Medina City Schools in Ohio. You can always go to um, this URL that I'll place in the chat to register for next week's session or any session coming up. Thank you so much, Jenny, for adding that. Wanted to make one last plug for BB World 2016. The call for proposals is now open. It will be open through Friday of this week. It's been open since January. I encourage every one of you to go and check it out and consider submitting a proposal to present at BB World this summer. We want to make um, the Key 12 track the best um, ever this year at BB World, and we need your help to do that. Um, it has been extended and it is open through this Friday, so please uh, consider submitting a proposal and do so in the next couple days. We'll put that link in the chat as well. Uh, we are very happy to have with us today Jan Dickerson from Atlanta Public Schools. She's an educational technology specialist at Atlanta Public Schools in uh, Georgia. She's been part of technology since she was a child. She loved the typewriter before personal computers ever existed. As a child, she would get any book and type the book on her typewriter as a hobby and later became a typing instructor. Once PCs hit the workforce with a bang, Jan began teaching herself how to use the wonderful machine and before long she was teaching everyone in her workplace on how to use computers. She has over 25 years experience as a trainer and technology specialist and has been with Atlanta Public Schools as an educational technology specialist for 10 years. Jen's passion is to teach others how to use technology tools to make their life easier and is an, an avid fan of online learning to better reach our students of today and tomorrow. So Jan, welcome. Thanks so much for uh, your time and expertise today. Uh, with that, I will hand it over to you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. As she mentioned, I am an uh, educational technology specialist in Atlanta Public Schools, and my duties include providing teachers with technology resources that's related to the subject that they teach, and also co-teaching with students on how to integrate technology in the lessons and what that should look like. I also provide training on technology tools and the district initiatives as required. We have quite a few things going on this year. Um, I'm currently assigned to six schools. I have three high schools and three elementary schools. And one of the high schools' focus this year is to become transparent. Um, so the principal said to me, Jan, I need something that everyone can see what is going on in the classroom. So um, I, of course, thought of Blackboard, and we came up with that. So I was challenged with creating a plan on how we were going to implement it. So after I shared with her with some of the best features um, about Blackboard, she was really interested. So we came up with a plan along with the leadership team on how we would um, implement this. So, um, so before, you know, before learning management systems and all the technology that we have here, um, 
it was unclear about what a grade is. You know, at the end of the year, you know what your grade is. Sometimes we wonder about our grades as a student. So um, if there is a, a newsletter or something of that sort, that was the best way to keep up with the students as it relate to what was going on in the classroom. So now with the internet, as we know, it's very powerful to share what's going on um, with everything. So um, we came up with that and um, Blackboard has been very successful for us. Of course, you know, there are some pushback initially. Um, teachers are afraid that now you see everything that's going on. So they would be criticized quite a bit. And um, however, teachers can actually share their best work or their best teachings. Uh, and what the online learning management system would do, allow teachers to access the student understanding more quickly and effectively than before because they're able to submit assignments. Um, they can be, you'd be surprised, they can be very independent with doing anything. They can turn in their assignments online from home as soon as the work is finished. And then the teacher can check the Blackboard prior to class and decide what students understand yesterday's learning goal before starting on a new list. This is a great advantage for that. And what Blackboard does, it gives students a clear channel through which to resubmit their work until they demonstrate that they actually understand the lesson, the writing idea or the concept. And with access to an online grade book, students can hold themselves accountable for missing any late work. Instead of needing to wait on the teacher to check the papers, to get back with them, to send them a list of the missing assignments. So Blackboard has the anytime, anyplace, anywhere type of environment. And that way the students stay on task a little bit more. Although it does take some getting used to for the teacher and the student. So why transparency? Why did uh, this particular principal want this in the school? Uh, she wanted to bridge the information gaps between the teacher, the students, and the parents. Because a lot of times, um, not until final grades are in, that parents understand how well their child has done in school. So this way, they're able to keep track. It's saying that we are transparent, that teaching and learning is going on. Um, you can check for yourself if necessary. And um, this is, has been very benefit, beneficial to us all. Teachers can make course materials available to students online and then can grade the work and return it with comments without leaving that physical paper trail. And that is one thing that they have on Wednesdays. They are not allowed to use any technology. Um, I'm sorry, any paper. Um, it's Green Day on that particular day, so they have to use technology for everything. Students can also revise their work immediately, resubmit it, and then track their assignments. When the students are absent, they are still held accountable for assignments. And that teaches them for college ready because they must be independent, especially by the time they get to the 11th grade. And teachers don't have to create makeup work necessarily. So the bottom line is that Blackboard allows teachers in our school to extend course content beyond the walls of the classroom, in effect transforming the mysterious closed classroom into an open one, a very transparent one. So with this, uh, the advantage to the parents, as I said before, they have access to the information that help them better understand the day-to-day -day operations of the classroom. So they know exactly what's going on with their children and they're able to help keep them on task. They can become better informed about course content and routines as well as the ch child's progress. And the leadership team, um, in this particular school, we have three instructional coaches um, and one data coach. So they are responsible for doing observations. There are also three assistant principals and one principal in the school. So they're observing all the time, but again, with a school that size, it takes so much to get to everybody. So they can be assured that teaching and learning is taking place. They don't necessarily have to go and observe a classroom to know what is going on from day to day. And this teaching can be assessed with just a click. They can check and see what is going on by just going to the website. And I'll explain that a little bit later. And uh, they can see exactly what's going on for that day or for that particular week, which is very helpful. So as I said before, um, 
the goal was to teach all the teachers Blackboard so that everybody know what's going on in the classroom daily and also for consistency. The principal wanted to make sure that if you're teaching biology, if there are three biology teachers, they should all be teaching the same thing pretty much the same time. So we want to be able to do that. Now the public um, will not be able to view grades and assessments. However, uh, the way I've done it is that I have linked the Blackboard site to the school's website. So what you would do is click on the teacher's name and you'll be able to see everything from Blackboard from there. There's a link there that will help you with that. So the um, teachers will have to create a minimum of one blended learning class using Blackboard. That is the goal. They need to have at least one. The blended class will include um, the standard components. Uh, and we decided, the leadership decided what should be included. We wanted four folders in particular, uh, the classroom, homework, projects, and assessments. Those folders were required. And of course, things, those things needed to be in those folders. Um, and of course, the students will be able to take the assessments using Blackboard. And we would, of course, as I said before, link the blended class to the school main website for public assets. So that was the schedule that was created. I would be the main trainer. But we also assessed the teachers to see how comfortable they were with using um, Blackboard. Some have used it as a student in college. And some have even taught online classes. So they were referred to as our power users. And that is how we went through that. So our target audience pretty much, as I said before, our teachers, and we categorize them as power users and then um, new users. So the power users assisted because I have six schools. I'm only able to get to a school. Um, I try to at least once a week. However, sometimes I may not see you in one week and maybe every other week. So we needed some users in there that could be there to provide support. And that's what we did. They all had computer use. They all have laptops. So that was not too much of a problem. So with the implementation plan, uh, as I said before, it was in-depth training. Um, I prefer small groups. So what we did was we provided training during the planning period. They have 90 minutes um, that they are required to attend. So we use that time once a week to provide that training. So um, during this training, I would train. And what they basically did was just give a, a scenario. I had everything set up to look exactly the way they would have to set things up with the particular links, with the folders, what it should look like, what the assessments should look like, and so forth. So um, I provided that training using something that looked very familiar. And then we went through it uh, together. So by the end of the session, they had all created their folders. They had all created their links. And what was left was for them to just put the information in those particular folders. Um, some decided to go ahead and get started on that. Um, we asked that they bring work that was actual work so they can go ahead and set up some things. So once they left the training, they would pretty much have everything that they need. So that's pretty much how we worked that. Uh, I did provide ongoing support during that first month. I was there two days a week uh, to make sure that they received the help that they need. And this was sometimes one-on-one -on -one support and sometimes small group support depending on what the request was. So we provide that as well. There was also a checklist that was given, and I'll show you all what that looked like. Here, give me just a second. This is the checklist that we use. So uh, it provided your name and your room number. These are the links that was required. You had to have a syllabus, you had to have assignments, you had to have a link for grades. And if you had any other, then I would just write down what that was. But I went to every teacher and um, completed this 
the required folders, classwork, homework, projects, assessments, and if you had any others, you would include that. And then the last step, if you once you had completed everything, everything was up to, ready to upload, you would link it to the school website. So I would sign where it says review by and the teacher would initial it. So um, this happened the first week and then I would check again uh, three weeks later and for, I would check with those who did not quite have everything and focus on those. I think I've lost everything. I'm not sure. Hold on just a second. Are you trying to share your application or go back to the slides, Jan? I'm trying to go back to the slides. I'm sorry. I may have closed out. I can pull that up for you. Okay, thank you. There you go. Thanks a lot. And as I said before, we checklist for consistency because we want everything to look pretty much uniform. Uh, the size of Faro as far as uh, students, there are about 600 students there, give or take. Were there any other questions? Okay. Did you work with just Thero High School, or um, how did implementation at Thero High School compare to that um, at other schools within Atlanta Public Schools? I mean, there, there, I can't even imagine how many high schools are within Atlanta Public Schools. Right, with Thero High School, it was required that they set this up. Uh, we have Blackboard accessible for all high schools. However, it depends on the principal if they want to use Blackboard or not. We have a few schools that use it, and it's basically based on uh, teacher requests. So if a teacher said, this is something that I want to do, I want to do flip classroom, I want to do blended classroom, whatever the case may be, and then, of course, I would work with them one-on-one. -on -one. At the beginning of the school year, I provide an overview on, you know, some of the features of Blackboard, how this can be beneficial to you, depending on, you know, if it's something you're interested in, and then I usually get requests from that point. We work by request, and uh, once I receive those requests, then we would go from there. Some just like to use it for assessments. Uh, some just like to use it for resources. But in this particular school, uh, it was required that every teacher set up a website. I mean, I'm sorry, a Blackboard. Um, those folders, she wanted consistent throughout the district. I mean, throughout her school, oh. so. Um, hey, sorry for the interruption. Uh, sorry for the interruption, Jan. Um, if, if you're not asking a question, if you could turn your microphone off, um, we're getting a lot of background noise and want to be sure that the recording is clean. So um, do encourage you to turn your microphone on to ask questions or use the chat. Um, asking a question, if you could turn your mic off. Okay. Are we good? Yes, and the other thing is um, prior to the training, you want to uh, prepare the environment to make sure that um, it is successful. Um, we wanted to make sure that everything was up and going. Of course, the internet, that's which is always an issue. Uh, depending on the building. So the leadership team was very supportive in this because this was important to them. So they made sure that we had enough extension course available for recharging laptops if necessary. We made sure that we had a wireless access point in the training room to ensure the internet access would be real reliable. We made sure that every teacher had a username and password for Blackboard. Yes, we did do peer-to-peer -peer teaching. That was the ongoing support. We provided, I provided training during planning periods, so it was no more than 15 teachers in a room. And after, um, if you decided, because there were quite a few teachers that just could not get it, they just followed the steps like it is in any big training. And then, of course, when I would meet back uh, later on that week, which is by request, as I said before, 
I would work with those teachers individually to make sure that they were comfortable using it too. And we pretty much did it together, to be honest, until they felt like they could do it on their own. Uh, we also, um, you know, as we prepared them, uh, the leadership team provided a brief overview on why it was needed, what the ultimate goal is. The ultimate goal is to make sure that they created everything that is consistent across the board. And then, of course, we will link it to the school's website. Um, I explained to, me, to them what the you know, advantages are to using it. A poll was given to determine the various experiences that the teachers may have used in the learning management system and so forth. And so um, we provided practice for, this, for the students so that they knew what to do and how to do it. And we also gave them opportunity to provide feedback on things that they thought would be best with their team because when they meet, they meet by subject content. So the math team may decide that we want to have a link to USA Test Prep. Or something like that. So we will work together on making sure that they have that. And after about a month and a half, some was, a, you know, were a little bit reluctant. Um, they did not follow through as they should. So um, with the checklist, the leadership team and I would go through it and see who exactly needed what uh, assistance with. Maybe they just needed a link to the website. So I also created uh, quick sheets on how to link to the teachers to the teachers website um i created quick sheets on how to create folders we also depended a lot on blackboard videos and videos are awesome so we use that as well to help us with everything to make sure that they had everything that they need because i'm not there every day all the time were there any other questions I'm looking through the chat, and I'm not seeing any additional questions right now. Um, but if, if you have additional questions, go ahead and type them in the chat or turn your microphone on to ask. Um, while we're waiting for additional questions, um, I'll go ahead and do my couple closing slides here. But please uh, continue to add questions into the chat. Thank you so much, Jan. Um, we always encourage you to reach out to us uh, if you've got a topic you'd like to see in the future or you're interested in presenting. Uh, you can reach out on Twitter or through email. And just a reminder again that the call for proposals for BB World is open through Friday. We'd love to see you there. We want to make it the best um, track ever for K-12. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank um, Jan for a great presentation today. And you'll... I'll be lucky to have a little bit more time um, back in your day today. But uh, again, we'll stay on for another couple of minutes in case there are additional questions. But thank you so much, Jan.